This Wild Card Weekend Fantasy Football Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag is your home for college and NFL playoffs. Use the promo code SGP and get up to $1,000 in free bets. MyBookie.ag, promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid at MyBookie.ag. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. PropSwap is America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Go to PropSwap.com to find better odds than your local book. Plus, when you use the promo code SGP, you get a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. That's PropSwap.com, promo code SGP. Finally, we're also brought to you by Healthy Mail. HealthyMail.com is the easy way to discreetly get ED medications like Viagra and Cialis. Use the promo code SGP to receive 20 pills for just $49. Requests for medication are not guaranteed. It must be approved by a U.S. licensed physician. HealthyMail.com, promo code SGP. Last but not least, we're brought to you by Sean Green. I'm headlining stand-up comedy shows in San Diego this Friday and Saturday. Go to SeanTGreen.com for details. Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Howdy. Happy 2020, Sean. Happy 2020? Yes. Dare we say, this will be the decade of clarity, Sean. What does that mean, Ryan? It's 2020. Oh, 2020. Perfect vision. And uh, I was going lowbrow hot take. There. Okay. There you go. Getting some get things some- will get a lot clearer this decade, Sean. Well, the man of the decade, bringing him on Justin Decker. What's happening? Decker? Yo, what's up guys? Stoked for a fresh start. 2020 San baby. Diego Kay. super chargers charge. I don't know if you can see on the video, but uh, Decker's wearing his brand new chargers vest. Oh yeah. I'm He's got the in, bolt guys. out. Yeah. Hashtag bolt up. Are you excited? The uh, next year, 2020, playing in the new stadium. Hey, maybe Tom Brady is quarterback. <laughs> there's dumb articles and rumors going around. There's well, no way that's happening. There's so much to get to. Uh, we, of course, we're talking fantasy football this episode. We're going to be giving out our FFPC uh, fantasy football lineups, DFS for DraftKings as well. But Decker, we got to talk a little bit about Philip Rivers. He gave an emotional, an emotional post game emotional. press conference, Never tearing like up. And he's just like, I just, we were able to go out there and, and I say we tried our hardest. And you know what he was saying? Something I've been saying for years and nobody listens to me. He, he's not immune to criticism. He knows no. that people criticize the interceptions. Yep. He's like, look, you look at all of them. They happen at the end of the game. I don't care. I don't give a damn. And I've always told you guys about I that. Don't the give interception. A damn. He didn't wow, say damn. I thought he I'm doesn't sorry, curse. he never says damn. I don't that's give a me, darn. That's me embodying <laughs> Philip Rivers. I don't give a dang nabit. I don't give I don't give a darn. But I, that's what I've been saying the interception is the most overrated stat for a quarterback. And he mentioned that. He he was kind of getting pissed off and fired but up. But Decker, we got to talk big picture here. Does Philip Rivers return as the starting quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers Why not? in 2020? Well, it sounded like, like why, I, that I press conference sounded point. like he wasn't coming back. Well, yeah. th- that's it sounds like people are not making him feel comfortable that they want him back. Yeah. Mm. That's what it sounded Ooh. to me. Right. He wants to play. He doesn't care. I, what You have a team, a talented team defense, unlucky once again. Literally, they're 5-11. and 11. L- Look at the Seahawks. They're 11-5 and five yeah. with like the same point differential. They had a catastrophic unlucky season. They do every year. Yeah. But you look at this young team that's talented. They just need their offensive line back. Look at yep. the offensive talent. He's an average quarterback. How many times in this century have we seen average quarterbacks go to the Super Bowl? Why would you get rid Eli of an average Manning. quarterback? Oh, Why Eli would Manning. you do it? I'm sitting right, right there. Here, Ryan, breaking news. <laughs> Eli Manning has not been named starter, oh. but he did. They did. The Giants did their Houdini act where they got him back to 500 against the Miami Dolphins. Houdini. Of, well, I mean, come on. He should have Jan- – Daniel Jones should have been starting against the Dolphins. Come on. You can't tell me that just coincidentally timed out that going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. And we haven't even talked about it, right? The Philadelphia Eagles with the mm. backs against the wall. Dougie P. Carson Wentz. Zach Ertz getting his kidney lacerated, playing through the pain. 
uh, in that Dallas game. And then the, the Giants game, 17-17, all tied. And, of course, <laughs> comes through with a clutch fumble. The Eagles are back in the playoffs. NFC East champs. How about those fucking Eagles, Ryan? My, I mean, favorite moment of the weekend was Jerry Jones watching <laughs> with the Giants Eagles game. Oh man, that in his was, box. That was so great. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. <laughs> with Chris Christie up there with him. Yeah. Oh, that is oh, uh, that's just so great. Well, especially when Chris Christie came out for the Dallas game, uh, and he's watching. It's like you could. You could not be more unlikable. Although Chris Christie did help legalize gambling, uh, sports gambling in New Jersey. So shout out to Chris yeah, Christie. Other than that, that's right. real, that's, that uh, real, just kind of waste of life. Kramer, <laughs> what do we, the end of the Pat Shermer era? Breaking news. Um, we thought Pat Shermer was the answer. We thought getting a number two running back overall was the answer. Who's we? Me. You're, and also, did you not see Gettleman was fighting for his life in the first year of his <laughs> tenure? All right, Dave Gettleman has been fighting for his life. They've locked Dave. Some Gettleman things down. are bigger than football, Sean. Some things are bigger than football. Yeah, I mean, Pat Shermer uh, gets fired. Probably a good thing, right? Now, Probably. Now, uh, is Matt Rule still the favorite to get the job, Sean? No, he is. I'm uh, very excited. He's about this not. Match. He's not going to be coaching the Giants. What, what do you mean? He's. He's basically said mean? he's not interested in. No, he said he's not interested in the Browns. No, he hasn't turned them down. But the fact that the Giants have gone all in on Dave Gettleman is signaling that they don't want Matt Rule because Matt Rule is a guy. He's a Philly oh, guy, right? Oh, oh, he's oh, he's a good oh. ball coach. Again, all over Baylor this year in college football. But he's a guy that's not going to let Dave Gettleman boss him around. And it cl it's clear that Dave Gettleman, in spite of the fact that the Giants are saying it's not going to be an issue. I, I think it's going to be an issue. It's going to limit the type of guys they're going to be able to get. I mean, Josh McDaniels, you think he's going to coach for the giants? Yeah. I think a head coach, not I mean, with if, Dave you're, Gettleman. if you're a head coach and you like the quarterback, I think it's a head coaching position. I think you're overselling the fact that someone's going to not, not take a job based on Gettleman when it sounds like Gettleman was pretty close to getting fired himself. But they are diving into analytics deeper than they ever have before, Sean. A lot, of, a lot of gems coming out the coming out of the John Mara and Dave Gettleman press conferences the last couple of days. Yeah, uh, but hey, you know uh, Joe Burrow, he's in play, right? No, because <laughs> the Cincinnati Bengals. God damn this. Well, right, and this is what's annoying. I can't even. And first off, <laughs> that what the show has been built on a rivalry between the Eagles and the Giants. Not true. But you guys aren't carrying your weight as a rivalry. It's oh, not a rivalry no. where we just fucking dominate you oh. year after year after year. And to me, it's like, I want to make fun of the Giants, but it's like, you know, it's like throwing a cripple down a flight of stairs. It's fun, but it's not as enjoyable if you're not bringing it as a competitor. Will you guys be competitive in 2020 against the Eagles? Because it's getting old beating you guys week after week after week. It's going to be super weird. Plus, I mean, at the end of the day, it's got to be really annoying to only have one Super Bowl. Oh, here you go. To lay, the to old, lay up the against. Old, don't, and don't rub in the one Super Bowl. We have Decker right yeah, in front you of play, us. You guys. play to win the game. Yes. And at the end of the day, <laughs> the, the while the Eagles have had more good seasons that have ended with a loss, last game is a loss. The last game is a loss for 31 teams, Sean. I, I know there's week 17. It's just no, a not really. Thing. But, <laughs> but. I think while uh, it, it's probably nice to have a team that's competitive every year. Yes, very nice. But I, I would. I would turn right to our man, Justin Decker, and I'm sure he would trade in a decade of above average for a championship and, and a lot of mediocrity. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. without a doubt. Sure. The Eagles have had the Giants number. Lately. Yes, that that's fine. But only once have the Eagles gotten to the mountaintop. So I think. Uh, there's still this year, Ryan. Th there is still this year. And you know what I know, That's Sean? Right. I know that there's a couple things that are good for the brand right now. One, <gasps> speaking of the brand, got the throwback on, Sean. Yes. Wanted to Wanted to bring us into the new decade. This is now the... We, we've been around almost 10 years, Sean. I know. It's crazy. And uh, I wanted to not only wear the throwbacks, but talk about we know what's good for the show. And I knew as I'm watching the Giants blow the game against the Eagles, uh, the little one is not happy about this. And I'm like, it's okay. It's good for the, it's good for the podcast. Hashtag good for the brand. Ryan, good for wearing, the brand. A, wearing a throwback 
Sports Gambling Podcast not available anymore. However, if you go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com merch, we got a ton of uh, new gear up for the new year. And uh, you click on the shirt and you can click the different logos. So we got a brand new Lock Dog Tees logo. We have, of course, the mm. classic shield, the uh, SGP, just in letters, the Dantabase, the college experience, and uh, Baby Whale logo, NBA Odds Pod logo. Uh, that's coming up as well. So uh, tons of uh, tons of great swag. I got a hoodie, SGP. Do, hoodie. do we? I, I feel like it's getting to the point where it went from a little bit of a joke to a, a weekend festival. What was that festival that they took the train in Canada back in the day? Oh, Festival Express. I, I feel like Great it's a little documentary. bit of this, where it starts building and it turns into this absolute phenomenon by the end. And uh, I, do the do we need Kramer FML <laughs> tour shirts? We should oh. with we should all have the key stops on this. On yes. the, right. All right. So c- could we come up with fifteen <laughs> stops on the tour at this yeah. point? I think so. Hit on uh, and I told coaches you- have been fired. <laughs> Coaches have been fired. Uh, heartbreaking right. loss to Virginia Tech. I mean, literally in the last eight, eight, th- eight what, two years, it's like four coaches have been relieved oh. of duty. Like those band teachers where they have FML on the yeah, front and yeah. all the stops on the back. I see. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you that. can definitely come up now. with uh, 15 stops. <laughs> <laughs> well, before can, we – Can I – one last thing. Sure. Uh, NBC. I, 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 I'm going to share some personal information. I personally was watching the NBC New Year's coverage because Carson okay. Daly is the least uh, annoying of the people. Who, Steve Harvey was really? hosting, but that was tough. Oh, with Gronk, that, that was tough. That was tough. I've only seen uh, of that. Ryan Seacrest, don't even get me started there. So I, I went over to Carson Daly. I, I, got, I got no beef with that guy. I like when he tries to crowbar in his random knowledge about music. But they play a video of like the moments of the decade. Moment, moments of the decade for like humanity. Yeah. Odell Beckham's catch made made the cut <laughs> for humanity. Like Oprah saying Wait, goodbye. Is, is that one of his one of his two touchdown catches this year? No, 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 no. This is when he was good on the Giants with a good quarterback. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow, well, oh, that is that is insane. Yeah. He made it there. Sorry. And yeah, I was back uh, back on the East Coast for the holidays, <laughs> and it was really it was a great moment after the uh, Eagles Giants game. Dad, of course, celebrating the victory, getting a little drunk, and then he started uh, talking shit about my hot yoga ability. <laughs> a very surprising thing about my dad is that he's gone all in on hot yoga, and oh, wow. he's there talking shit. He's like, oh, well, I want to do a hot yoga class tomorrow, but uh, you're probably not man enough. It's that real Bikram yoga, not like that hot yoga they have out in California. And so he really was just talking a ton of shit, drunk off the Eagles about my hot yoga ability. That's he got my good. head because I went to the normal hot yoga instead of going to the Bikram one because my dad <sighs> has got it in, in my head that it's going to kill me. And hot yoga in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania is pretty amazing. First off, they have a giant cutout of uh, Sylvester Stallone. And then it's just so great to hear people in Philly accents talk about hot yoga. Like, okay, we got you. You, uh, we're gonna get a water break uh, coming up. This is good for your soul. Let's go. And it's just, it's really great. I'm thinking of writing a show calling Philly Hot Yoga. And uh, <clears throat> so look yeah, for that coming. I was gonna soon. say, has always sunny done hot yo- hot yoga episode yet? No, but they should. Ryan, the playoffs, they're here, and you can bet on them over at mybookie.ag. Presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast. You can play, win, and get paid over there. Up to $1,000 on your first deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. Bowl games, live, in-game wagering, NHL, NBA. Of course, a personal favorite, the uh, custom prop builder. Great for uh, the playoff time. We're going to be talking about all the uh, player props we like on next episode, Ryan, but we're going to be talking about DFS and you can bet, of course, a lot of over under player options, all the, uh, 2020 championship LSU Clemson. That line is up all that you can bet over at mybookie.ag. Don't forget deposit withdrawal for lightning pass, lightning fast payouts using Bitcoin. And again, it's a simple formula they have over there at mybookie.ag. And that is first to play second to win. And then finally, to get paid using the promo code, of course, SGP. All right, we're going to kick things off fantasy football for the playoffs by giving out 
our FFPC lineups. Kramer, walk people through the format. How well, you play. Qu- All right. So, essentially, you make a lineup for the entire playoffs. Yes. Pretty simple rules. It's standard FFPC scoring. So, it's PPR plus the bonus of one and a half points per reception for the tight end, which makes it pretty interesting. Uh, lo- tight ends get, get really valuable. Points, uh, you just add them up the entire uh, go about it from the wild card weekend through the Super Bowl. Points double on Super Bowl Sunday. And you it, basically there's one rule. You can't have more than one player from a team. Quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, two flex spots that can be tight end, wide receiver, or running back. A tight end, a kicker, and a defense. So basically you're not selecting a player from two teams. 12 teams in the playoffs you're selecting one player from all the other teams you get their points for as many games as they play yeah now i don't know if you hit it but you can't choose two players from the same team yes it's so really it's a, the only rule it's it's an interesting dynamic of well you would think you would want to load up on one and two seed players because they're the best teams but then you have the buy game so it's great to try and identify wild card teams that are going to get to the super bowl and give you that fourth game that bonus game uh, so you can really rack up some points. Two hundred dollar entry fee. I think five hundred thousand dollars goes to first place. You can figure out how to join. I'm not going to explain it because uh, they're not paying us. But we also we have a uh, FP FFPC lineup building tool that our, our writer uh, John Jackson worked up. Did a little programming. It's a pretty sweet little spreadsheet you can download. So uh, <laughs> wow. It's a new it's a new decade. Sean is getting excited about spreadsheets. Well, if it's on our site, hell yeah. Uh-huh. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all about the company, Ryan. Sports Gambling Podcast. Oh. And again, new year, perfect time. Maybe your New Year's resolution is to stop being such a freeloader. Yep. Head over to Sports Gambling Podcast iTunes. Give us a five-star rating and review. That's how we pay the bills here. All these picks, podcasts, posts, it's all free. All completely free. And that's the new year. Advertisers, you know what they like to see? They like to see DJs writing awesome reviews so we can keep this fucking content train <laughs> alive. Thank you. Cutching. Decker. Yeah. We're going to allow you to start off. Quarterback right, position. Well, before for- we start, I-, I just wanted to get a little bit of intel out of the way because I, I think it probably will, uh, all of our lineups will hinge on is Zach Kurtz playing? Is yes, he going to play? That was my biggest question. Is I don't. Go- I don't think play? he will play this game. That no. is my. We're taping this Wednesday afternoon. He has not been uh, cleared for contact. That to me leads. Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders uh, will play. It's a low grade ankle sprain. He participated in the walkthrough uh, today, meaning Wednesday. It was only a walkthrough. I think he'll definitely play. Now, how effective will he be? Do you have the onions to throw Boston Scott in there? Those questions will be answered in our lineups, but and that's then there's where Jordan at. Howard too. So Jordan Howard not, again, he's an interesting tough. guy too because he he only got a couple snaps against the uh, Giants. They didn't actually give him the ball. He's coming back from an arm stinger, so now that maybe be, he gets a little bit more work. But Boston Scott's been looking great, and he's been really uh, doing well in the passing game. Was actually the leading uh, receiver against the Giants. So and Howard doesn't get catches anyway, even when he's healthy. Right? He'll it's get a, a couple, but it's it's very limited. So yeah. I wouldn't count on him as from a PPR aspect. They might use him on the goal line, or they might still be slowly bringing him back. I, I think. Of those guys, in a weird way, I think Boston Scott, it's tough. I, I think Miles Sanders, if they make a run to the Super Bowl, Miles Sanders is a guy that will have a huge part and get you a lot of points. However, short term, this game, you may want to go Boston Scott in like the uh, DraftKings. Well, lineup. and that's the interesting part of this game is the theory around a you're trying to you're mostly trying to pick w- which guys are going to play the most games. Sure, you a guy like Derrick Henry could score four touchdowns in a game and score two games worth of points anyway but the first you're really trying to figure out like who, who do i think is going to advance but after that everyone can have the same same lineup so you have to be a little contrarian at some point or you're just going to have the right same lineup. but then also you have to i mean we've seen it so far in the playoffs these past five years the one and two seeds do get in there so you get those double points and if you can identify tight ends that are gonna be in the super bowl that's huge three points uh ppr i, I think one of my bigger caches was obviously when the Eagles won 2017, but one of the guys I had was Gronk and, you know, three points per well, reception. We also cashed that year with Nick full. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think obviously the double points, you just, tr- the way I look at that is you treat it like a, another game. So if you think if you 
think strongly a team like say the Ravens is going to make the Super Bowl, you you would say like, well, I think I'm going to get four games out of them, even though they have the bye week. I'm going to get four games out of them because that's when you you have to level and kind of compare it against the teams playing the first weekend. That's what I do because what you're doing the first weekend, you're saying which one of these teams can be the New York Giants and go on a run, which one of these teams can be the Philadelphia Eagles and go on a run. So, yeah, I, I it's interesting because you you play too many teams the first weekend. And you get the wrong the wrong ones out, and it, it really sucks. You, All right, yeah. Let w- enough uh, enough Decker. enough hype. Let's, Let's kick do things it. off, Decker. Who's your quarterback? Put a lot of work into this. I I think there was only <laughs> three choices for me, honestly. Okay. I I went with Lamar Jackson just because I think they are the oh dominant God. favorite, and he's gonna get the rushing yards. But it was between Drew Brees, Lamar Jackson. And Kirk Cousins. Mm. And right away, Ooh. two of those guys play each other in the first game. So that would be the contrarian just because if one of those you goes like to the that. Super Bowl, they're going to play those like four that. games. But I just think the Ravens are dominant. And I'm, I'm going to go just conservative with the, with the QB pick and, and Lamar. Yeah, certainly a lot of other people will be playing Lamar Jackson. But again, if you think they're going to get to the Super Bowl, that certainly gives you a fighting chance. And you, maybe you find your contrarian elsewhere in your lineup. Kramer, what are you doing at the quarterback position? So I'm assuming I, I think I know who you're gonna take as your quarterback. So, yeah. Uh, so I'll leave that aside because I actually do have a lineup with that situation. <laughs> Josh Allen. Oh wow, well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> uh, no, I I and and Decker took Lamar. Ja- I saw on his pad earlier that he had Lamar Jackson. So I was like, all right, I'm not gonna give out my Lamar Jackson lineup because that's no okay. fun. But I think. Uh, full disclosure: I'm doing four of these. Okay, Three. because okay. someone someone tweeted in no, no, at sorry. Gambling Podcast over under Ryan's lineups for FFPC. First, first of all, yeah. I said it at naively said it three and a half. He pounded the over oh. <laughs> because oh. there's also there's thirty five dollar <laughs> versions of these games as well. I've done zero have, of the thirty five. You're gonna do ten, Ryan. I'll probably do a couple of those, but I I am doing two solo lineups and I'm splitting uh, three teams with some other folks. One of them with you, Sean. Yeah, named SGP. So I'll have some diversity out there. Uh, Lamar Jackson's an obvious choice. I think if you're doing multiple lineups, you have to have at least one lineup with him. His floor is so high. But uh, I'm going to give out a bit of a stretch. This is a square contrarian play, but it Ooh. is a risk putting this man in the quarterback spot. We uh, we were bickering over a text, which is just it, this, it's just like textbook Sean trolling, right? Like throw in there that I like Russell Wilson for my quarterback in the FFPC. And just immediately it's going to trigger him. And while I agree, I think there's some risk there because the Eagles at home as a home dog in the playoffs is something where I'm like, that's interesting. (coughs) They are so banged up. And it is Carson Wentz's first playoff game as a starter. So I'm going to go Russell Wilson here. Here's why. This team can go on a run. I know there's so much smoke and mirrors with, with the Seattle Seahawks, but it's Russell Wilson. And as you've repeated to me this year, they are a better road team than they are home team. They are seven to one on the road. Who that? I mean, so lucky though. They're you, they're four and four at home. You you should look at that. I mean, their point differential is like plus seven. Who uh, who's the one seed? San Francisco. San Francisco. That's true. If they win in the first round, guess who they get a rematch or a third game well, against? Unless unless if the Vikings, uh, we, we all know the Vikings aren't going on the road. Winning in but New then Orleans. they have to win in Green Bay or what else? New Orleans? They but, would but probably, that. Uh, yeah. But walk that path. Russell Wilson's had good games against San Francisco. Yeah, Russell Wilson's capable Francisco, of having good right. games against Philadelphia for sure. And if he were to have to play New Orleans in a dome, I, I like that for us. Anyway, I'm going Russell Wilson. I think the ceiling's very high. I think they clearly are going to have to depend on him. I know I, I'll hear all the reasons why you like the Eagles uh, on the NFL Pick Show coming later this week to your feed but i think for this purposes for a bit of a uh it's a square lineup i'm going to throw out but i have some uh i have some i I appreciate your contrarian angle i don't think it's contrarian i think it's just a high risk here's another angle though what if he only plays three games get to the nfc championships Do, do you think he can score more than somebody who gets a quarterback that gets to the Super Bowl. Well, it's interesting too because you look at you look at Russell Wilson's stats, and a lot of this is the idea of where they had Chris Carson and they were really pounding the ball at the running game. Now they've lost Chris Carson. Uh, what was the kid from uh, San Diego State? I'm blanking on the name. Penny. They've Penny. lost. They've lost great. Penny. Yeah, they've lost them both for the year. And Their offense size, 
is kind of contingent on pounding the rock. Now they've kind of lost that. They brought in beast mode. How much will he be able to get that? Maybe he does have to put the team on his back. I'm looking at Russell Wilson's sat line from the game. They won in Philadelphia, 17 to nine ugly game. He was 13 to 25, 200 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception. He was sacked six times, uh, 15 rushing yards. I I think Mm. he's going to struggle with the offensive line injuries and the Eagles defensive line. You saw it firsthand, Ryan, against I did. the D line is, is coming together. And I think they're going to be able to contain Russell Wilson, but certainly he has a ton of playoff experience. And if there is a guy to go on the road and possibly win, maybe it is, uh, maybe it is Russell Wilson. I'm going with Carson Wentz. <laughs> of course. Why not? Why not believe in this team? This Why team, not? this magical team. He's uh, Carson Wentz longest active uh, streak of passing touchdowns in the NFL with 19, 19 passing touch, 19 games with a passing touchdown. Wow. That's pretty incredible. 4,000 uh, passing yards this season with no receivers over 500 yards. This guy is really putting the team on his back each week, finding new guys off the practice squad, guys that are getting cut left and right. 12 of his 23 completions yesterday were caught by undrafted players. This guy can't be stopped. He can't be contained. He's playing with confidence and uh, the, the offense is really in rhythm. They're just whoever's the next guy off the practice squad. Doesn't matter. The Eagles offense moving, rolling, love it against uh, Seattle defense, which is kind of seen better days. True. And I think, and it certainly, I think they have a chance to go on a little bit of run here. Even and and if they rising. do, it has to be Carson Wentz. I, I yeah. think to your point earlier, maybe you throw a running back out there, but that, that could change week to week. Maybe you throw Dallas Goddard because yeah, Ertz is coming be spreading back. spreading the ball around. Goddard, Goddard certainly interesting tight end play. We'll get to those. But uh, I do think Miles Sanders is the guy. But again, the ankle injury, maybe Boston Scott comes in there. It's It feels like it's a more week-to-week situation. Decker, who's your first running back? All right, so this is the position that – I kind of sacrificed. I think somebody tweeted out yesterday, what position would you sacrifice? Just looking at the running back injuries here, I'm just going to go with the first running back where I, I I wanted to take somebody from Houston, and I just went with Carlos Hyde. Mm. That's kind of my sacrifice. I know he has six touchdowns, 1,000 yards, doesn't get catches. But, I mean, we've that's seen the kind of Buffalo, guy, maybe just the consistent guy. Just We've seen Buffalo control. struggle against the running back. Who would they play if they win? Good. If, if the if the favorites win, they're gonna play in the the Chiefs, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the Chiefs, can be Chiefs ran defense off. has been better, but uh, they're oh, certainly. No, I'm sorry, been... they would play the Ravens. Yeah. All right, Kramer, yeah. what are you doing here, running back? Uh, you know, this is where it, it feels very square, and I I'm gonna just say it out loud. So when he has a great playoffs, I can I can look back on this. But I really wanted to play Jonu Smith in something because it Ooh. feels very contrarian, and we've seen him kind of have explosive games. And if you map his path, assuming they can get over this first hurdle, it's quite intriguing. But I, 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 I also wanted some Tennessee equity because this New England team is trash. They have a great defense, but they're trash, and we've seen them struggle against the run a bit. And that was in just walk, early in the season they had a good defense. Like in the walk, Tennessee. I, I think they still have a great pass defense, but in walk, Tennessee, and Derrick Henry, and again, like, look, this dude, whatever they're, whatever he's doing to get he's his one body of those right. guys who will get penetration. He is clearly uh, still ascending. He gets better as the season goes on, and and at this point, like there's times when you run, when you watch the Tennessee Titans run the ball, where you're like, wow, that dude's big. Yeah, he is a big dude. He's big, fast, powerful. And I got a weird feeling that Tennessee is gonna, as much as we we shit on the Titans this year, I got a weird feeling that this is the exact team that can go in there and beat the Patriots. Tannehill Obviously. led the league in uh, QB rating. Yeah, t- and Tannehill's that? an interesting Tannehill on the road. Are you kidding me, Tom Brady? <laughs> Tannehill's an interesting FFPC play because we've seen in games where he feels like he has to put the team on his back, he uh, starts running the ball. I also took Derrick Henry. Feels square though. That, that's the last yeah, thing I want to say. Yeah, uh, but you're going to have some square plays in a winning lineup. Derrick Henry last six games, he's averaged 149 yards per game, and he's had 10 touchdowns over those six games. I mean, yeah, there's nothing to think about here. Who's your second running back, Decker? Okay, so I like this. This is the the one I like for Green Bay, Aaron Jones. I think he, he's been uh, really busting out these last few games, and he's taken a lot of those touches away from Williams. 
and he he's another guy who looks stronger as the season uh, ha- has gone on. So uh, I'm, I'm going with Jones. I don't know how far they'll go, but two games I think may be enough just to get to Kramer. the championship. Uh, I also have Aaron Jones. Again, feels a little square, and I, I thought about the Aaron Rodgers angle, but he spends – I mean, we, we saw it from the very beginning of the season. It was clearly about getting the running back the ball more. And this is the first time he uh, Aaron Rodgers has had a thousand yard rusher since Eddie Lacy, and that was a very good Green Bay team. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to lean on Aaron Jones. He scored how many touchdowns this year? Something twenty. Led the league with nineteen, 19? touchdowns, 19. tied with Christian McCaffrey, kind of quietly, right? Yeah, I feel like we he do came this on DF- later. Yeah. We do this DFS podcast every week, and I don't remember a lot of episodes where we had Aaron Jones in there. Uh, he's been a PPR guy as well. I'm also throwing Aaron Jones there in the second running back slot, and uh, it just feels slot. How's the slot? It feels like a great spot for him. Great way to get involved in Green Bay, and and I mean maybe you go tight end for them. Maybe you go Devonte Adams, but you know even when they're winning, Rodgers is not putting up the historic numbers he has. And I think a lot of that is Aaron Jones sucking up the uh, numbers and the points. Mm-hmm. Decker, let's hit, kick over to the receiver. What are you doing? Who's your first receiver? All right, uh, I'm going with Tyler Lockett. I'm not Ooh. a big. Fi- this was a tough one too. Um, you know, I like, I like Wilson just cause I think, like I said, I think he, he can get enough in three games. If he gets to the championship, I don't think that's going to happen. I went with Lockett, uh, just cause their running backs are banged up. He gets big plays, eight touchdowns over a thousand yards. He's still the favorite over uh Metcalf. They've been going to the tight end a little bit, but, um, that was just my play there. Love it. Wow. All right. Uh, another square play. I did Michael Thomas. It's hard to not play Michael Thomas. I, I also have uh, Michael Thomas, historic oh. season, 149, beating out uh, Marvin Harrison, which we shouldn't mention because he made murder. Rest murderous. in peace. Oh, I- <laughs> uh, 149 catches. Second in the league is Christian McCaffrey at 116. He he out caught p- uh, the second place guy by 33 catches. That's kind of insane. And what I thought was really interesting about Michael Thomas this season and the Saints offense, we even saw him doing outdoors on the long grass. You look against the Titans. That's how they beat the Titans. They just kept throwing it to Michael Thomas. So if Green Bay win or if New Orleans wins and they have to go to Green Bay, I still think they can put up good numbers there. And even against the Saints, or sorry, if they had to play, uh, if they had to play the 49ers, uh, which I don't think they would, but whatever, whatever the situation is, I think if they're going to be outdoors, on long grass, I still think they get Michael Thomas involved. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy's just fucking killing it this season. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a what, – what steered me to a point of being like, ah, maybe not. It's just they're going to play – they are going to play Green Bay if they win. Yeah, but and you can maybe get cute with Kamara. I do think Cook really makes a lot of sense. Nine touchdowns this season, and you get that one-and-a-half uh, PPR. I don't know if he'll get a ton of looks, but I would imagine he does – Decker, who's your second receiver? No, mine's mine's Michael Thomas, too. I okay, should have flipped, yeah. flipped the order because he's the number one, obviously. But, I mean, he could get 22 catches in two games and two touchdowns. Yeah. You know, he like he, he that's I mean, he's he he really it, – it's like one of those guys, he's the clear number one. Teams try and take him out of the game, and they still just force feed him targets. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. What are you doing, Kramer? <sighs> All right, well, yeah, staying chalky. Like I said, this was a pretty square lineup other than the quarterback, perhaps. High risk, DeAndre Hopkins. I'm, ooh, I'm, I'm kind of making a position on this game too. I, I think, yeah, Bills. I love, I love the story. I like the team. I like the defense. But is Watt gonna play? He's been practicing. Mm, Deshaun Watson's not losing this game, and Deshaun Ro- Watson's gonna be slinging the rock. And I, I think Hopkins has slowly kind of gotten his groove back. Had a slow season. Uh, by his standards, but down the stretch was definitely getting the ball. Still 104 uh, catches. Still yeah, solid. no, but it was like there were definitely games where something was, wasn't right. And uh, I I punted on the Bills. I didn't play a Bill. Me too. I, uh, I, I, I have Devin Singletary in a lineup, but I, I just don't – I just don't see them winning that game. I think it's tough. All right. I uh I went Julian Edelman again, kind of a chalky play, but oh, that's so gross! <laughs> As, oh my god, it's a baby fucking wheel, man! You, you know, Tommy B, his his back is against the wall. TB twelve, is it enough? He, I mean, the Patriots are kind of on the edge here. 
who is the one guy that that Tom Brady trusts on this roster? And it's Jules. Now Jules hasn't looked great as of late. Hasn't looked like the same, <laughs> the same psycho of past. But Julian Edelman could catch like 10, 11 balls in a game and really make this uh, something. And also, if they do, Patriots beat the Titans. They do kind of go on a run. How is he not involved in this offense? How is he not catching double digit balls if they're going to make him or White, one of those yeah, guys? Yeah, if they make it to the Super Bowl, how does Julian Edelman not have a huge part in that? And and to count the Patriots out, I think would be crazy. Certainly, they're in the mix there. But uh, yeah, Julian Edelman. As well, much and that and that's an interesting play, right? If you want to, you want to get real cute, you play uh, Nicole Harry, right? Yeah, he's starting and maybe to get he's, more targets. He's maybe he's to, getting the carries that, the last few games too. So a couple carries. They obviously like his physical ability. Ooh, speaking of physical 20, ability, twenty twenty and physical ability, huh? You're gonna need uh, you need to start hitting the bench so you can have strong arms to stack all the cash you could have by starting your own sports book over at aceperhead.com slash sgp aceperhead dot com slash SGP. That's right. 2020 perfect time to start your own business. Why not start your own sports book? instead of each week thinking about how you can beat the bookie. Why not just say screw it and become a bookie. That's right. Aceperhead.com. They make it super easy. Set you up with an all inclusive professional betting site. All the lines updated to the second wagers graded immediately. Top notch customer sport going 24 seven. Some of the sharpest lines in the industry. Ace per head also offers live betting, amazing mobile experience, everything you need. And best part, if you go to aceperhead.com slash SGP, you get up to six weeks free aceperhead.com SGP for up to six weeks free of the leading paperhead provider. Talk a little flex spot here, Decker. What are you doing in your first flex spot? All right. First flex. I'm going with George Kittle. Okay. This is a tough one. The NFC was just tough. Like who do you pick for the 49ers? I yeah. think they're going to win their first game. Mostert always gets a lot of carries, but sometimes they switch it up with the running backs. Garoppolo has been above average, but he doesn't put up huge numbers. Kittle with the yards per catch and the big he's just a big game guy, I think with the 1.5 just in this. Yep. I think that's what put it over the top for me. I think uh, that's my uh, 49er. Kramer, what are you doing? First flex. Yeah, as much as I wanted to go Debo Samuel or Emmanuel Sanders here, I went George Kittle as well. I <clears throat> part of it was because I think he, the, I think they could play, be playing the the Seahawks and lose. Yeah, and I still think George Kittle could have a great game because the Seahawks team pretty bad defending the tight end. So, yeah, and again, I'm I'm basically rattling off relatively square plays here. It would but. have been really nice if the Arizona Cardinals would have got in. It would have made this uh, a lot easier. <laughs> I'm also going George Kittle, my first flex spot. I think <laughs> if the 49ers are doing well, they George Kittle is doing well, right? Like Jimmy G as the safety blanket there in San Francisco. And the one and a half point PPR is just too tempting not to include it. And if you look at the top fantasy uh, tight ends, they're all, all three Kittle, Kelsey and Ertz are all three in the playoffs. And I, I think you'd be crazy with the one and a half point PPR. Why, why they did that for tight ends. Maybe it was FFPC was created by a tight end. I don't understand. It, it, it adds, I like it. It create, it just makes more players relevant. Yeah. It's, it's a fun variable and I appreciate it. So yeah, George Kittle is my first flex spot. What are you doing when your second flex spot Decker? So th this is the toughest one on the board and I still, I may change this. I don't know. I'm, I'm taking an Eagle with a flex and I, right now I have Miles Sanders down Ooh. just because of the, the, the 50 catches. I don't know his health situation. We talked about that before, but I, I who else was I going to take? Uh, you know what I mean? Like you could put you could put a Goddard? Dallas Goddard in there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know though. You could he's, do Boston Scott again. Yeah. Kind of crazy. He's coming off probably uh, a career game, but Goddard may be the next option just because even when guys have been switching forth, he's been consistent. Well, and, and here's go the thing to him, too, no like, even if, there. even if Zach Ertz does suit up on Sunday, I still think he's not going to be 100. percent And Goddard is going to be a big part of the lineup. And Goddard has had decent games even when Ertz has played because. They, you know, they go out of their way to double or bracket Ertz, and that creates opportunity for Dallas Goddard. So I think in FFPC format in particular, Dallas Goddard, a lot of value. But this yeah. is subject to change, but uh, Ooh, Sanders. Wait. Say I, that again. Subject. <laughs> it has to be. Subject well, to change. <laughs> Kramer, what are you doing? Who's your uh, second flex? Uh, second flex. 
Got to get a chief, right? Mm-hmm. So do you play Kelsey? Do you play Tyree Kill? Do you go off the reservation and pick a running back with oh, the Chiefs? Do do Damian Williams is 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 the guy in the Lashawn current... McCoy dark horse. Um, what do you what do you make of the Damian Williams big game week seventeen? It wasn't. It was just one run. Is that to get? It, it was off a the fluke set? run. It was a fluke weird run. I I just don't. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna. I feel like. I'm do some karma. Uh, he's been a huge part of the offense all year. Travis Kelsey. I'm also going. We there. had that moment. Was it last year, Sean, or two yeah. years ago, where he was just crushing it in the first half and he got concussed? Yeah, we had all. It was yeah. against. It was against the Titans, oh, yeah, where the Titans right. ended up coming back. Kelsey was going off, and we had him in FFPC. We had him in DraftKings. We bet all his overs, and he had like a monster first half. He basically just needed one catch to hit all his game overs. And of course he gets knocked out with a concussion. It is a Travis Kelsey revenge playoff run, 136 targets this season, 97 catches, which uh, led all tight ends. He's a huge part of the Kansas city offense and I'm definitely throwing him in there. Yeah. I can't hammer this home enough, but yeah, one and a half points PPR lock it up. Who'd you go for a uh, tight end there? Decker Kelsey. The, and he had a, a kind of a season under the radar too. Just yeah, with, he did. The it's weird. He came in like fourth or fifth in receiving yards, right? No one talked about it because he didn't get like those highlight play touchdowns. What did he get? Five, five touchdowns, six. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, he's still the top tight end, other than Kittle. And it's, if you're going with a chief, you know, you, uh, I yeah, think Travis that's Kelsey you go fourth to. in receiving yards at twelve twenty nine. Fourth, yeah. So yeah, uh, under the radar, I think you got to throw him in there. Yeah. Kramer, what are you doing? Who's your tight end? Well, so I don't have a Raven yet. Mm. Mark Andrews. Oh, you stole it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I couldn't go the route. Of, I, don't, I I do have a lineup where I have the Ravens just with Justin Tucker. I, I'm a little worried that this is just going to fall flat on its face in the playoffs. But I think with Mark Andrews, he's – while there, there's not – exactly a ton of targets that go around in Baltimore he gets a ton of the target share and you can't yeah. take a receiver really. and he's got I also went Mark Andrews he's got 64 catches leads the Ravens interceptions next closest is Hollywood Brown at 46 yeah. and really it's the red zone right 10 touchdowns so uh, he's the guy that uh, Lamar feels comfortable with in the red zone he's the guy that's going to be getting a ton of looks so I went with the three tight ends what stack. is the contrarian play for the Ravens. Oh, maybe because it is. There's maybe no wide Hollywood. receiver. I, I think I think contrarian would be Hollywood Brown. Is but it? I, like I don't know. Justice Hill or? Yeah. Would you God, really play is one Mark of Mark Ingram going to play? Is it Gus Edwards? Like he could have a monster game. I mean, uh, we've seen two. Hollywood Brown have huge games. I think maybe that maybe that is the contrarian play, but I. I It'll be one of those games where he, he catches three passes and two touchdowns. Yeah. Decker, what are you doing at place kicker? Okay, Dan Bailey, just because it's indoors. Yep. Uh, that's all I that's all I have on that. Yep. <laughs> that's I also just did Dan Don't Bailey. Really say more. My only note is kicker in a dome. <laughs> Why not? I'm not taking anyone from Seattle and I'm not taking anyone what, from What you're Houston not taking anyone slide. from Seattle? No. Yeah, I I uh I don't know. I, I'm actually. I, I made a, a swap in here because I was going to play the Eagles kicker, but you made. You guys made good points about dome, so I'm going to bring the Bills back in with Stephen Hauschka. There you go. Um, yeah. So I, I'm. I'm. I'm now punting the Eagles. Well, buyer mm. beware, right? I punted the Eagles, Sean. Mm. Hopefully, they lose that first game, huh? Bills. Uh, or no, sorry, Decker. What are you doing for your defense? Uh, New, uh, New England. I mean, I I don't have confidence in this team, and that's just I didn't want to take Tennessee or Buffalo. Those are the two teams that I dropped, and they get turnovers. They're number two in turnovers. I mean, if you're not confident in a team and they're number two in turnovers, that's and they have a home game. I think that's the team that you go for. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah. Decent strategy, Kramer. What are you doing? Yeah, I I, I didn't want to be the asshole who didn't have a Patriot when they're playing in the Super Bowl. Uh, so I <laughs> I took their defense. I took their defense. I I really I, I feel like I feel like I'm rel- I was relatively close to taking Minnesota here, but now that now that I'm done or Philly even, that's actually a fun way to play Philly. Play their defense. Mm. Their offense is a bit scattered. Well, yeah. and they've been la- Injured, they've been yeah. racking up the sacks, uh, or at least the last game. So we'll see if they're it... playing Russell Wilson. He gets sacked a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they would. You know, the next couple of matchups not quite as as nice, but they you know they they beat the Packers. 
Mm. My team defense. I went with the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. This defense has had moments where they've really, uh, you know, some big plays. I, I think they're capable of getting turnovers. But to me, this is also just a fade against the Texans' offense uh, in the playoffs. Last five games, Texans' offense, and a bunch of them have been at home. They've only gotten over twenty points once, and that was that weird <sighs> game against yeah. the uh, against the Oakland Raiders. So. I think there's certainly a scenario where uh, you know they kind of get Texans aren't moving the ball. Maybe they get a couple sacks. I, I, I think there's a real scenario where the Buffalo defense has a good game. Only team with a negative point differential in yeah. the playoffs is the 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 Texans. Well, Look they're, out! They're they're kind of trash, but you know, I, I think there's something there with the uh, quarterbacks making their first start, right? Yeah, isn't that a thing? I think there is. There's, it is a thing. I don't know. I don't know. I know the stats off the top of my head, but it's got to be. <clears throat> you know what else is a thing? Prop swap. Head to propswap.com. Use that promo code SGP. 100% match. It's pretty awesome. And it's 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 one of those matches. There's no rollover bonus. I deposited $100. I had $200, and I bought a ticket for $200. That's you know, the cool, the cool thing about prop swap, you can get better odds than you may get at your local book, online book, whatever you're using PropSwap.com. Since you're buying real sports tickets, real sports bets out there, you can find better odds. If someone wanted to hedge, um, you know, this past week, an LSU football championship ticket, the collect amount of 12,400 was purchased on prop swap for 6,400. So those were odds of plus plus one seventy, better than anywhere you're going to get online. I know this firsthand. I went over to PropSwap.com. They had a Philadelphia Eagles to win the Super Bowl ticket listed for two hundred dollars to win ten thousand. Now that's fifty to one. Right now, if you go to a sports book, you're not getting fifty to one. So I just bought it right off PropSwap, and uh, I'm loading up. Kramer, are you doing anything on PropSwap? I well, I got. I, I was actually looking up those numbers for you, but yeah, no. I I went over to PropSwap, Sean, and I loaded up more on the LSU Tigers. Ooh. So would you get a uh, for them to w- the win oh, the national? It was, it was like two to one. It was m- maybe maybe a plus one eighty. Yeah. And most uh, of the inventory was for ballers. I got to be honest. I, I wasn't rolling with enough cash to buy some of these <laughs> tickets, but yeah. I do like the interface and I like yeah. how I can I can. And if you ha- I'm not it, being shady, Sean, yeah. we can be open about it. We can come out, come out of the closet, yeah, right? and you can also uh, sell sell your. If you think uh, you got a long shot, you're sitting on. You want to hedge out. And again, the guy who sold the Eagles ticket to me, he bought it at uh, I think he got it like a uh, hundred bucks at a hundred to one. So he made a hundred percent profit on it. I bought it for two hundred dollars. I'm getting a good deal because I'm getting fifty to one instead of forty or thirty five to one uh, somewhere else. And he's getting a good deal because he's getting a hundred percent payout on a on a ticket. So everyone's a winner over at PropSwap.com. Use a promo code SGP hundred percent deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. Void where prohibited. Propswap.com promo code SGP. All right, heading over to the DraftKings. So fun. Just so many options. So many ways to bet on the playoffs. Uh, talking DFS lineup just for Wild Card Weekend. Real Decker. quick, Sean. I, yes. Before you get to that, the stats for those quarterbacks making their playoff debut in the Wild Card is. round: eight and twenty-eight straight up. That's not good. Wow. Three and eleven. ATS as the favorite, seven and fifteen ATS as the dog. Ooh. Unders, Eagles. That's our worse dog. Than I thought. <laughs> yeah, worse off to be the dog than the favorite. Uh, unders are twenty-seven and fifteen, sixty-four percent over that stretch. This is from our boy uh, John Boy. Be- uh, John Boy beats. So I don't think we put Wentz in that category though. Allen Wentz and Tannehill are in that category. Okay. Yeah, Has Wentz right. made a playoff start that I'm not aware no, of? No, you're right. You're, no, but I'm saying he's I don't part of a Super Bowl team that he took all almost all when the way you're there. sitting in the suite. Well, you're right. When you're that would when you're sitting stats. in the warm suite watching your team <laughs> you play. Know what's, you know what's true. really that interesting is, is uh, and we'll save for the picks uh, podcast, Ryan. But the Seahawks Eagles line is at 45, which seems astronomically <laughs> high uh, for the type of game I'm expecting. No, so, I think that's low. Oh, you like the over on that? Well, if we're going by my DraftKings lineup, oh, okay. I took a lot of well, let's, let's 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 get, get into, into it. it. <laughs> Who do you got for your quarterback? Oh, uh, Russell Wilson. Ooh, okay. Yeah, just, just for garbage points. I mean, I he could get a half. Love he, it, Decker. He could. No, no, he's see, trash. He could, he, 
<laughs> so take out the garbage. <laughs> Who are they going to run the ball with? Well, I mean, the weather oh. shouldn't be that bad. It shouldn't be that yeah. windy. So there, there's a situation where just because it's cold doesn't mean it won't be points. Yeah. But I'm with you, Sean. He's going to get two. He'll get two touchdowns in the fourth quarter and like 150 yards of just garbage. I think this is a game where the Eagles. It's going to be high scoring, though. I, I disagree with you on the. Okay. Uh, you're thinking. The, you're thinking big score. Yeah, I think it's going to be. It's, it's going to end up being like 34, 24, Eagles. Okay, I'll take that's that. What, that's what I'm banking on with uh, Russell Wilson. Is just those garbage points, like three touchdowns, 300 something yards. Kramer, what maybe are you doing? 30 rushing yards. Uh, I, I was making a, a switch to, should I, no, I'm going to go with it. Carson Wentz. Uh, I, I think, uh, from a fantasy perspective, especially in a big contest, like it's the perfect time to pull the trigger on Carson Wentz. You can save a couple hundred bucks from some of the other quarterbacks. Uh, Watson, another guy I may target this week. feel like he might be a little contrarian. He's going to be slinging the rock, but yeah, Carson Wentz against the Seahawks defense, they can be had, uh, I didn't want he has to been running up. the ball uh, more too. It's not, just, not, it not has to ton, be but. him. It has to be him. Uh, I do think they're going to show up. And again, for, for a big millionaire maker type contest, this is the kind of guy you want to start this week for this week. Uh, I, I'm sure I will have a Carson oh, wow. Wentz uh, lineup. I almost switched it. Cause I didn't want to be redundant. I'm glad I didn't. I I'm going to go for the DraftKings purpose for this uh, <laughs> one on air. I'll go with Ryan Tannehill. Oh, okay. $6,300. And again, this guy, he's been slinging the rock and there's just a certain thing about this Titans offense where, I mean, we saw it against some there there's moments where they can really put up a ton of points and uh, do it fast. He, he's got a great connection with AJ Brown. So yeah, give me Ryan Tannehill at 6,300. What are you doing? Uh, running back wise Decker, uh, Travis Homer, just for the price 5,300. And uh, he's, I think he's going to get those catches too. They don't have anybody else. He's he's going to get like six catches. Marshawn Lynch looks quarter. fat. Let's yeah. Let's be real. He <laughs> looks does. fat. Robert Turbin, who knows? No, um, didn't even play. Did he the last game? No, I'm I'm with you. I also have Homer fifty three hundred. Yeah. Why not? Again, there there's there's going to be opportunity here. I think maybe yes, the defense has been better, but they they just played um, a set of some bad five teams, catches. The last, exception of the Cowboys last game. Yeah, no, 30 I, I, yards. I love the play. 5,300. Yeah. Yep. John. Yeah. Uh, I'll start off my first running back, Alvin Kamara. Now I, I think there's, there's a lot of scenarios where he gets involved. He's kind of been hot and cold fantasy wise, but at $7,400, I think he could be involved in the passing game. And it seems there's been moments where, especially at home, uh breeze has really relied on him. So yeah, give me Alvin Kamara, especially against this Minnesota defense. I, I, I think they're vulnerable. So yeah. Give me uh give me Alvin Kamara for seventy four hundred dollars. So uh, I love Decker's Carlos Hyde play in the FFPC. That's a that's a great contrarian play because he is he's boring, but he could end up with a hundred yards and they a could touchdown. be in boring games. Hundred yards and two touchdowns. I think he has a good matchup specifically this week. I've been touting it all year. Buffalo ha- the Buffalo's defensive weakness is r- against the run and specifically on the road. So. Car, uh, Carlos Hyde for fifty one hundred feels like a massive discount on what he should be. I was able to fill both running back spots for the price of uh, a normal Christian McCaffrey, which felt good. So, mm-hmm. Carlos Hyde fifty one hundred for my second running back. Give me Boston Scott oh. fifty eight hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I, I think he has another. Uh, I mean, he's just really involved in the passing game. Uh, six targets, four catches for eighty four yards. I do think Miles Sanders plays, but I don't know how healthy he'll be. And it does seem like they're slowly nursing Jordan Howard back. I think Boston Scott has one more big game and it's at home against the Seahawks. And he's only $5,800, which is kind of crazy considering like three weeks ago, he wasn't on the team. Uh, So you're paying for it, but uh, yeah, give me Boston Scott, 5,800 bucks. Mm. What are you doing for your uh, receiver spot Decker? Uh okay well let's go with the let's go with the best first then I'm going lock it I'm stacking a, I have four Seahawks oh okay week, and I'm going for lock it wow. for, for the big plays yeah I, I'm assuming they're just, uh, I'm assuming they're just gonna lose this game and they're gonna be behind and they're just gonna get you know just deep shots and so I just went lock it the eight touchdowns over a thousand yards so. Let's say I'm all in on the Seahawks this week well and and <laughs> certainly the Eagles defensive secondary has struggled at times. 
to cover the deep ball. And yeah, I mean, that could be a possibility that some of these guys get burned. Looks like Jalen Mills will probably be back. Uh, but interesting to see Rasul Douglas up and down year. We'll see if he's out there. Kramer, what are you doing? First receiver. Uh, stack with Wentz. Give me Greg Ward. Oh yeah. I don't know who's going to be there. I don't know who's going to be there, but this guy seems to be there. They seem to test test uh, trust him. him. He's now at uh, 30 targets over the last four weeks. That's reliability. Is he a San Diego state guy? 5,200 Houston played quarterback, played quarterback for Houston. Mm. Yeah. Love, love getting some G money. I'm going AJ Brown. Uh, Love that stack. He's, I mean, He's just been dominant. I, I think you could make a case for him for offensive. Uh, he's a rookie, right? Offensive rookie yeah, of the year. Yeah. And I mean, he's been like a top five receiver. It feels like the second half of the season coming off a huge game in a must win spot, four catches, 124 yards and a touchdown. Um, yeah. He'll occasionally get a couple of rushing uh, plays, but, and I do think this new England defense like Gilmore, <laughs> he got thrown on. I mean, you know, the Devonte Parker was putting up yards against him. So Maybe this New England defense not as historically awesome as everyone was saying. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Myself included, but yeah, give me AJ Brown, uh, seventy four hundred dollars. I, I like the play. I, I considered it. He's I definitely, yeah. All right, Decker. Who's your? Oh, you took him for your second receiver. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's just getting been getting chunk yardage. They've been uh, making it a point to get him <clears throat> involved too yeah. in the in the last six games, or you know, ever since Tannehill took over what in, I don't know, week six anyways. And they're running the ball with him too. He's just getting chunk yeah. yardage, like, He's just a guy. like second to like Mike Williams. It seems as far as yards per catch yeah. in the second half, they're, they're going to make a point to get him the ball. I just, I mean, you just have that feel Kramer D- DK Metcalf. Oh, yeah, I went, went with I the other receiver. Uh, he had massive amount of targets last week. I think yeah. I've now watched a number of Eagles games. And again, uh, guys like Sterling Shepard and Golden Tate not super successful. It's the big physical guys. Mm. I think they struggle with the larger bodies, the physical receiver. Well, I do think it depends what cornerbacks res- uh, are in there. I, I think-, think Metcalf is going to be able to to run that back shoulder game. I think he's going to be able to run the slant game against these guys. He's only sixty one hundred this week. Decker pointed out. I think there there could be some points in this game. Uh, I'm going to go to the second receiver with DK Metcalf. And he's a good garbage time uh, player. Well, he also gets a lot of red zone targets. I mean, again, Josh Gordon, no longer on the team. So uh, someone's got to, got to pick up the uh, red zone slack and there's no running backs. I mean, Homer, I I just played Homer, but I I don't know where else the ball is going to go. Maybe Hollister's a fun play later. Stay tuned, but Mm -hmm. Okay, for my uh, second receiver, Michael Thomas. I mean, talked about him a ton in FFPC. But give me give me a little taste of some Tom, Thomas and Kamara Saints at home against the Vikings defense that I think on the road in a different dome I think it could be trouble and, and I think Minnesota really uh, has a great chance to move the ball against this secondary so and again he gets looks regardless of game script even even if the Vikings were to go in and win this game I still think there's a scenario where Thomas has ten catches you know hundred yards and a touchdown so give me Michael Thomas. Decker, what are you doing for your third receiver? Uh, I'm going Cole Beasley just because. Love some bees. Yeah, I mean, you look what they're doing. The Bills are just going to him. He's getting touchdowns. He's one of those guys who are like, oh, he's a slot receiver. You know, he's kind of like this Hunter Renfro type now where you don't think he's going to get a lot of touchdowns, but he's gotten six since week eight or whatever. You know, they, they, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. He's a safety but, blanket. Yeah. And you saw it, you saw it in the uh, Cowboys game on Thanksgiving. He really, what happens is. If if uh, Allen's staying in the pocket, Brown is usually the guy he's going to go to. However, when he starts scrambling, moving around, JJ Watts chasing him. Beasley seems to be the guy he's has the best chemistry with, as far as like scramble drill, finding the guy, you know, finding an open spot well, you, there. You, in the middle and this of the is field. a safety blanket game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Although, yeah, unfortunately, the K metric has not been very successful in the playoffs. So Josh Allen, he's got uphill battle. First start, and his eyes are too close together. <laughs> is this the third wide receiver we're on? Yes, Ryan, third wide receiver. Well, uh, isn't this a g- game where Julian Edelman could have a million catches? Yeah, I mean, I had him in my FFPC game or lineup. I don't know if they win the game. But I feel like if they're losing the game, it's going to be a lot of Edelman catching seven yard passes. 
Hmm. I could see he's only sixty five hundred, which it feels a little cheap. Uh, he's cheaper than Diggs, which that feels odd Lockett to me. Lockett is even more. Uh, so yeah, let's go Edelman, sixty five hundred. I think I think he could have a massive game because dare I say this? Uh, I think the Patriots could be playing from behind. Wow! Mm, wow. Stay tuned. Hold on, <laughs> hot take, hot take machine over here. Twenty twenty is the year of the hot take. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Hot, 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 hot. Here's a hot take. Here's a here's a guy you're not going to see in anyone else's lineup. Oh. We're looking at a start percent under two percent, uh, w- which is what I would predict. A guy that <laughs> if he goes <laughs> off could win you the millionaire maker or whatever the equivalent is. This is. An eagle? It is Ryan, and it's an eagle who goes by the name of Deontay Burnett. What? That's right. If you look at his DraftKings profile <laughs> update, Burnett joined the Eagles' active roster Tuesday. Even though he was just there on Tuesday, he still had four targets, two catches for 48 yards, including a 41 yard, a deep ball. Wentz is looking for him when he's scrambling, when he's getting outside of the pocket, oh. which you're doing more of. I think he could have a deep ball against the Seahawks. He's got solid hands, decent speed. Um, probably What's the price $3,100. Oh, wow. So he's, he's as cheap as you can get almost uh for a receiver, the Ante Burnett at home. $3,100. Oh, that's how you win the championship. Yeah. Sean. Decker. Those are those millionaire plays. You know, you need yeah. one of those. Give I me mean, a tight end. I kind of don't really have one of those plays. The, the cheapest guy I have is uh, the, for tight end is Hollister. And that's just cause I'm, I'm stacking. Uh, I mean, I got to assume that he's going to have the best game out of the tight ends to win this. And he could, you know, he's consistent the last half of the season. You know, he's going to get three, four catches. 45 yards. They go to him a lot in the red zone. He hasn't had a lot of success, but they go to him a lot. And he had that one called back and he's had a lot of close calls. They go to him. And so that's, that's where I'm going. Kramer tight end. What are you doing? Well, you, I think you mentioned him when we were doing the FFPC portion, Jared cook, Ooh. Uh, mainly. Cause I think it's a nice zag play this week. I don't think uh, a lot of people are going to be on him. I think people are going to see the Seattle matchup and be like, Oh yeah. I, I really want to get involved with Goddard. If Ertz is out, I think as I highlighted earlier, Jono, Jonu Smith's a fun play. I also think Dawson Knox is a fun play at mm. 2,900 against that Houston team. That is definitely susceptible to being beat by the tight end. But uh, Jared cook has, he's it's weird, right? Cause uh, Michael Thomas is the one that working over work in the middle. Jared cooks, the guy working the seam. And it seems like him and Drew Brees have chemistry when they are at home, and he's certainly a red zone target for Drew Brees. So Jared Cook, forty nine hundred, like it. Mm. Vikings trash again. This is another long shot play. Uh, a guy you're not going to be hearing other uh, shows talk about. Certainly, twenty nine hundred dollars at the tight end position. Give me Josh Perkins. That's right. Since with wow. with Ertz being out, they had needed, a good game last. They've week. needed a second tight end and. Again, twenty nine hundred dollars. You get Josh Perkins, six targets, four catches, fifty yards, and a touchdown. He's a guy that has reliable hands that they seem to be involved in. And again, these are a couple just long shot guys that I could see having five catches, maybe a touchdown, something like that. A couple deep balls. So Josh Perkins, twenty nine hundred dollars. Sean has done a a ton of scouting on other men's hands. <laughs> yeah, since we've last seen him. So I'm. I've been just doing a lot of handwork. And all you got two guys around three thousand. You must have the top running backs. Well, again, been, and that, and that's why I'm were. able to afford Alvin Kamara, okay. AJ Brown, Michael Thomas. Okay, I'm going. I'm going boom or bust here with some of these. Uh, guys. Sean, uh, would you mind playing the? I, I, we need to make room in the garage for an Escalade. Well, you're skipping Decker's. Uh, oh, flex I'm sorry. Form. Oh, Miles Sanders. Oh. We talk, we've talked a Not lot an about Escalade. We talked a lot <laughs> about him, but I, I want to. I'm going for uh, a bunch of catches here. Yeah, which he's capable of if he's if he's healthy, uh, you know, five six catches, sixty yards. Yeah, stay stay tuned on on that. I I think he does play because it's a low grade ankle sprain. How effective he'll be? Again, bit of a risk, but certainly if he's close to one hundred percent, he's going to get a ton of volume. I love the Boston Scott from like if I'm an Eagles fan, I want Boston Scott to like, I want the hero of Boston Scott to continue to grow. Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, All right, can we? Sean, they say you're not supposed to do this. 
in my flex spot. I told you I think that he's gonna have a good game. I think the Patriots are gonna lose. Derrick Henry Ooh. runs down the throat of the Patriots. What what led me to Henry over AJ Brown was strictly the fact that I think Gilmore's really fucking good. And if Gilmore is gonna follow Brown around all game, that's trouble for me. So I went with Derrick Henry. Like I said, I think this guy just gets better as the season goes on. And I, I think there's a real narrative here that has the Tennessee Titans banging the Patriots early physical getting up. And uh, we'll see if, uh, if Tom, Tommy can do it, but Derrick Henry for 8,200 like it nice. in the flex spot. Now this is, I'll, I'll get your guys opinion. I have essentially $4,900 left in my flex spot. Essentially. Do, essentially, actually, exactly. Do I go I'm going back and forth. Do I go Jared Cook, who I really like, but I already have Kamara and Thomas. Yeah, that's a lot. Or do I look uh, to like a Sony Michelle? I'm gonna say no. Uh, no Sony Michelle. Okay. If no to have- Sony Michelle. No. What about like a Mike Boone? What about a uh, Rex Burkhead? Sony Michelle. This is a hit or miss lineup that you already have. Yeah. So I would say go with Sonny Michelle, Jared Cook. You're gonna have two tight ends. Yeah, you're he's right. not gonna get two touchdowns. Can I give you fifty yards? You're right. I'll go Sonny, Sonny Michelle because again, it's a boomer bust play, and it seems like they're gonna want to try one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and I, I do think the Patriots game plan is gonna be limit Tennessee's time of possession um, by you know controlling their own time of possession. So Sonny Michelle could be a part of that. And you look at Sonny Michelle's carries. He's the most consistent player, 15 to 20 carries. He's only yeah, going to get one or two last, catches. Last three games, 19, 21, 18 carries, nothing crazy. Getting about five yards, five to four yards, a touch, not uh not a ton of catches. So that's a little bit of boom bust, but yeah, yeah I'll go Sonny Michelle. If there. you, you want to have some fun, you take Harry. That That's what you do. 41. That could be the play. It, I, so, something. It can't be Edelman or White, right? I'll go. I'll go Maybe Sony Michelle, Michelle just because I getting Burkhead involved too. I'll uh, go Sony Michelle a, just because I feel like I do need a little consistency from this lineup because uh, it is a lot of like wild card guys. So yeah, that's a way to go. I'll go Sony Michelle. Decker, close things out. Oh, actually, Decker, before you do, yo, let's uh, got you know, got to talk a little uh, talk a little erections here with healthy male. <laughs> You know, the great thing about sex is no PED testing, right? <clears throat> you either get an erection, you're not. There's no, you don't have to do any drug testing. If you're on drugs, hey, no need to be ashamed, no need to worry. But maybe you don't want to tell everyone about it. Maybe you just want to discreetly get them over at healthymail.com. They make it easy for over 20 years. They prescribed almost 3 million prescriptions online. You know, again, don't buy them from, you know, some, some local guy, some gas station. Just go online, healthymail.com. If you use the promo code SGP, 20 pills for $49. Let's, let's be honest. I had an erection last night. They're amazing. If you're not getting them regularly, you know, cosign, go to healthymail.com. Just to clarify, Ryan's cosigning that erections are awesome. <laughs> oh no, I was cosigning that you had an erection. Oh, sorry. okay. <laughs> oh, you can give them a call. one 877 viagra uh, See if you are eligible and avoid doctor visits for your ED once and for all. Use that promo code SGP. Free shipping. And again, it's not you sign up for healthymail.com. It's not some subscription service. Uh, they're not going to um, automatically charge your credit card. And again, they, they ship everywhere. Home office, hotel, vacation. Probably maybe. not office, right? Or, yeah. Or maybe, maybe you never uh, know. It's, know. It's discreet packaging. discreet packaging. It doesn't say like boner pills on the side. No, why not? Go for yeah, it. Exactly. Healthy, uh, healthymail.com promo code S G P. All right. Now that we discussed erections, let's talk defense. <laughs> Decker. Well, I'm not exactly Big hard D. about the Texans defense, <laughs> but that's where I'm going. Okay. I think we covered that first, uh, first game as a QB for Allen. I think the bills are overrated. They've had probably the easiest schedule. I haven't yeah. checked it just going off the top of my head uh, of any team here. And I like I like the Texans just getting back on track with rest uh, Texans 2,600. All right. I had 2,500. So I had to pick between the Titans and the Vikings. And while I think the Vikings narrative of going down, like if somehow they could find a way to ruin the saints again, Oh, that would like be if awesome. the city of New oh, Orleans man. can cancel the Super Bowl in New Orleans again, that would just be swell. <laughs> so I'm definitely pulling for Minnesota this week. Uh, but no, I, I went Titans. 
<laughs> this offense for the paint. All right. So yes, Ryan, I, you did take Edelman, whatever. Uh, lots of catches there. <laughs> I'm going with this Titans it's defense. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. And, and you can stay tuned for my official pick, but I am going to be bucking the first start trend with Ryan Tannehill. Ooh, okay. Well, he's got the fam- familiarity with the Patriots, and and I'm really this is more of just a bet against this Patriots offense. Yeah, they're uh, really. I, it's going to be tough for them to put up a ton of points. Uh, we'll see. So uh, look, I'm I'm picking between the two lowest priced ones. I think the Saints could put up a lot of points here because they want to showboat. They want to they want to stick it to the Vikings after what happened. Oh yeah, there's a huge so revenge game. I, I didn't want to touch that defense, so I went with the Titans. I think there's plenty of opportunity for Tom Brady and. You wouldn't believe this, Sean, but you know it gets cold in New England. It's going it to be does. in the high 30s with rain at kick. Yeah. You think Tom Brady is going to want to? St- if they're not able to run the ball, and Tom Brady has to drop back and throw the ball 40 times, he may not make it out of this game. It makes the Sony <laughs> Michelle play look a little better too. Yeah, exactly. I, I do think they're going to have to rely on easy passes to. Um, Edelman, and then maybe the running game with Michelle there for my defense. No shock here. Give me the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles at home. Uh, less than like 16 points per game at home. This defense is completely different at home, and the defensive line has kind of come alive. They're going up against a banged up offensive line. They had six sacks last time they played uh, Ooh, Russell yeah. Wilson. I think they get at him again. Strip sack is in play, and Jalen Mills interception prediction. For the sports gambling podcast. And also mm. I look for special teams. They haven't had a special teams touchdown all year. You got G money back there. Uh, Greg Ward returning punts, maybe Boston Scott involved. He does feel like the new Darren Sproles at five foot six. So a uh, lot of opportunities there. All right. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Yeah. Nailed it. Did a ton of a uh, ton of fantasy football talk. We'll be talking picks, player props, kind of more in depth. Uh, putting that out tomorrow. And again, if you're in the San Diego area, Friday, this Friday, January 3rd, Bay bridge brewing eight o'clock kick. I'm headlining the show there. And then uh, if that doesn't work for you, what about Saturday, eight o'clock a show at a uh, 4590 park Boulevard, university Heights again, uh, next to twigs. There is the oh. name of the oh, spot on there. It's great. Yeah. He's so from check it out. there back in the day, Sean T green.com for all the details, but really you guys, Get your lazy asses and write a review. It takes 10 seconds. If it's an awesome review, you'll win some sweet, sweet SGP merch. Decker, any uh, any plugs, promos? Where can people check you out? Check me out on Twitter, Justin Decker, yelling about the Chargers. And uh, that's, that's about it. Check me out on Sports Gambling uh, Podcast. Yeah. Write some funny articles every yeah. once in a while. Unlucky teams. That was that's always right. fun. So, yeah, make sure you check that out at Justin Decker for the Twitter. And for the Sports Gaming Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Yeah, uh, Sean, you didn't ask, but you can check me out on Instagram at Kramer Centric. Sean, you wouldn't believe it. I'm up to 239 followers. Uh, I d- I did post a fifth thing. It was big, wow. Bigfoot up in oh Pullman. I think I'm due for another thing. <laughs> Stay tuned. So maybe this weekend. Remember that at Kramer Cetric. If we get to 300 followers, I will definitely post your, your follower to post ratio is impressive. Is. I'll give you that, Ryan. It's very organic. <laughs> Kramer. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, I thought. No, no, that's perfect. Okay. It's very organic. Kramer. Let it ride. <laughs>